Hello, my name is Ayan with Garner Hall Education Through Imagination, and today I'll be giving you a lesson on figure finishing. We'll be covering how to figure finish the mini songbird as well as the larger songbird. While there are many techniques that are similar between the two, there are a few key differences that we'll be going over later. When we refer to figure finishing, we're referring to the process where an animatronic gets fur, paint, props, clothes, and anything else to make it look that much more lifelike. It is recommended that you watch this video in its entirety before following along with your project. Without further ado, let's get started. In our kit, we have everything you need for the figure finishing process. Let's take a look. Here you have your project notebook. Let's go ahead and turn to the concept art page. Here you can design the look and color of your bird. Let's go ahead and take a look at the materials we'll be using for figure finishing. We have a paint palette, our fur, some burlap ribbon, hot glue gun, and some glue sticks, some sculpting tools, paint brushes, a small water cup, some foam clay, your paints, tacky glue, a hairbrush, eyes and some rubber bands, and a small pair of scissors. If you are working with our larger bird, you will also have a larger pair of scissors, some extra foam clay, a small sewing kit, fabric hooks, and some Velcro. And next we'll paint the head. It's always a good idea to have your concept art nearby so you can always refer back to it. If we notice this note right up here, it says to turn to a certain page in order to see where the fur is placed. If we turn to the figure finishing section of our notebook, we can see certain areas around here that give a certain color that are showing us exactly where the fur is placed. This is also the same with both notebooks. To get started, let's grab our bird's head and beak. We'll do that for both of our birds. You'll see that I have one disassembled and one assembled, one for the smaller bird and one for our larger bird. In both cases, it is recommended that you paint it while it is disassembled as it makes things a little bit easier, though you can still paint it while it is assembled. We'll also need our paint palette and our paints. When painting our bird head, we want to make sure that we aren't putting too much paint around the edges of the beak for both of our birds. Because if we put too much paint there, then the beak will have a lot of trouble closing. When you are painting your bird head, again, refer back to the diagram to see where the fur is placed, as you don't need to paint the entire face. Once your bird's head is fully painted, we'll go ahead and install the eyes. For the mini bird, we'll go ahead and grab our two eyes and the eye block. You'll notice that we have these two openings on the side. We'll go ahead and insert the eyes into these two areas. Once your eyes are fully fixed into the eye block, we can grab the two tabs at the back. As you can see, it has a slight bend to it. And from the back of the bird, we'll go ahead and insert it in place. For the larger bird, we'll go ahead and grab our two eyes. We'll also need some pliers and a hot glue gun. We'll go ahead and grab our pliers and one of the eyes. Go ahead and grab the eye stock with the tip of your pliers and hold it at about a 45 degree angle. We'll then test to make sure that it's in the right spot and adjust the eye accordingly. Once you have it in a position that you like, we'll go ahead and take it back out and we'll take our hot glue gun and right around the edges of the eye, we'll put some glue and then very quickly go in from the back of the head and hold it in place. 
Once the glue dries, then we'll be able to release. And then we'll repeat the process for the other side. First, let's take our fur and lay it out. Pay attention to the direction that the fur is going in. As you can see, it looks like it's growing in a certain direction. Lay the fabric fur side down on the table. Take your fur template and cut out the pattern along the cut line. Depending on the bird kit you might have, the size and pattern of your fur template will be different. Before cutting out your fur pattern, it's a good idea to take a photo or make a copy of these patterns so that way you can refer back to them later. You'll also note that it has specific instructions like fur direction or areas where it says glue on this line. Similarly, with the larger fur pattern, you have some additional instructions like the placement of Velcro, uh, the area for glue, as well as the placement of fabric hooks. Once we cut out the pattern, we're going to place them on the back of our fur. Note the arrows that specify the direction of the fur. I'm going to take a look at the front of my fur to make sure it's going in the same direction. So I can see it's growing downward, so I'm going to make sure that the arrow is pointing in the same direction. I'm going to place all of these on my fur piece, so I know they're all going to fit. Once you have placed your pattern, go ahead and grab a marker and we are going to trace along the outside. Now that we have traced out our pattern, it's a good idea to hang on to this in order to reference later. Looking at our fur template, we can see there is a dotted yellow line around the edges. This is going to be on each one of our fur pieces. And that tells us to put a little line of glue all the way around the edge. So go ahead and take your tacky glue. And what I like to do is Slightly draw a glue line all the way around the inside edge of the lines we just drew. Then you can take a small paintbrush and you can brush it flat so that way the glue dries a little bit quicker. This is so that way whenever we glue the fabric onto our bird the edges don't fray. And now we'll wait for this to dry. Now that our glue is dry, we can go ahead and cut out our pattern. We'll go ahead and take our small scissors, and when we cut out our pattern, we want to make sure that we're not cutting through the fur and the fabric, that we're just cutting through the fabric itself. So kind of use part of the scissors on the bottom and just kind of scoop underneath the fur and try to just cut the fabric itself. Now that all of our pieces are cut out, we can get to painting. It is also recommended that you have a small piece of scrap fur just to practice a little bit of your painting before doing it on the real thing. To start painting our fur, let's go ahead and grab a test piece. We'll also need a brush that is wide and has a flat tip. We'll grab whatever colors that we would like to paint with. We'll also fill our cup with water and we'll go ahead and grab our palette. To start painting, we'll go ahead and grab one of our colors and we're going to put a very small dot of paint into our palette. We don't want to put a lot of paint in there because what we're going to do is we are going to dilute it with water. Go ahead and take your brush we're going to dip it in the water to kind of soak it. And we're just going to one droplet at a time, put some water into the palette with our paint in it, and then mix it together. 
we're looking to get the consistency of the paint to be about whole milk. That seems pretty good. If you are mixing any colors together, go ahead and mix it in a separate area of your palette and then move a small drop to a clean one where you can then dilute it from there. Once you have your paint on your brush, go ahead and take off any of the excess on the edge of your palette and holding your brush flat, we're going to brush in the same direction of the fur. You can also see I'm flipping the brush back and forth to get the paint off of both sides of my brush. Once I get the paint off of the brush, I'll just set it off to the side. Then I'll grab my hairbrush and we'll then brush through the fur, going in the same direction as the fur. Then we'll want to go in the opposite direction of the fur. You'll see that on the fur, it is a much lighter red than the paint that we have. That is okay. We can always go over it again, but you never want to go over it again while it is still wet. So we're going to brush it up. So that way the hairs are kind of sticking up in order for it to dry. Once it's dry, we can go over it again, but for now I can move on to a section I have not painted yet. So go ahead and dip the brush again, get rid of any of the excess and then very gently go over the top of the fur. You never want to go straight down and you don't want to brush in multiple directions. We're just brushing in the same direction as the fur. I'll do the same process of brushing with the hairbrush. And then brushing back up. So this is a bit of a practice piece, but once you are ready and you think you have the hang of it, then go ahead and move on to the pieces of fur that will eventually go on to your bird. If you want to double check where the fur is going on your bird, you can always refer back to the fur placement diagram where you can see all of the pieces and their placements. If you recall on our templates that we cut out before, we can see the area for the chest this piece of fur will line up with the chest piece. This is the body of our bird. And you can see we have our small chin piece here as well, and so on. If you're painting our large songbird, there are a few additional steps you'll need to take. Let's go ahead and flip our fur to the other side. And you can see I already have some things glued on and attached. If you take a look at your cutout pattern for your fur, you'll see some areas where it is marked for Velcro as well as your fabric hooks. On your fur pattern, it'll indicate whether or not the Velcro is face up or face down. We can see on the fur here that we have the Velcro face up on this side. And on this side, we have our Velcro face down and halfway off the edge. For the body piece of our fur, we will also need to sew this together. If we take our fur, we are going to fold it with the fur facing inside. And looking again at our template, we can see this green line here that says sew along this edge. So if I look at my fur, I can see from this corner here all the way up 
to this edge. So from here all the way up to here. In your kit, you will have a mini sewing kit. The thread on each of these needles will already come pre-threaded, so we don't need to worry about that. Go ahead and take one of your needle and thread. You'll notice that it is doubled up. We're going to locate the end of our thread, and we're going to tie the two ends together. Now that we have our thread knotted, go ahead and pick up your fur. Try to make sure that each end is fairly aligned with each other. And starting from the corner here, I'm going to come from the bottom through our fabric until I feel a little tug. That is where my knot is. Now that our thread is knotted, we are going to sew again from this corner all the way up to this edge here. Make sure when you are sewing that the two edges are lined up as best you can. I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to pinch the fabric just like that where I'm going to start my thread. Once I pull and feel just a little bit of a tug, I can feel the knot. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to push it just between the knot itself. You can see that it's going to form a bit of a loop. I'll push the needle through the loop and then pull it tight. Now we have our thread knotted on our fur. Next we are going to do a overcast stitch. So we can see the thread is located nearest to me. I'm going to go on the opposite side of the fabric, push from behind, and then pull through. And I'm going to repeat that process until I get all the way up to the top. If you feel like you're starting to run out of thread, tie a knot and grab a new piece of thread. I can see I'm running a little bit low. I have maybe about two inches or so of my thread left, so I'm going to tie a knot off here. I'm going to go ahead and pinch the fabric. When I pinch, there's going to be a little bit of a knot here. I'm going to push the needle through the knot and tie it off. We'll go ahead and take a new thread. And we are going to repeat that process. We're going to pinch until we feel the knot and then press the needle just between the two threads below the knot and then tie it off. And we'll go ahead and start our overcast stitch all the way back up to the top. Once you are done, we'll go ahead and tie off a knot again. We are going to pinch the fabric. Once you see a little loop, we'll go ahead and press the needle through that loop and then tie it off. We're going to do that one more time. Pinch through till we have a loop, press the needle through, and then tie it off. We can go ahead and just trim the excess. And now that it is sewn together, we'll go ahead and turn it inside out. And we are now done with our fur for the large songbird. Now that we have finished with our fur, we're going to go ahead and attach it to our body shells for our bird. 
Right here I have the bottom body shell for our mini bird as well as the top shell, the head and the back hatch. If I'm going to attach the fur, we have our back hatch here. I'll go ahead and grab the fur piece for my back hatch. I'll go ahead and align it up the best I can. And we can hot glue this in place. You want to make sure that the fur is covering all of the plastic. If you find any part of the fur is extending a little bit too far, don't be afraid to trim it down a little bit more. Next, we'll grab the head. You'll notice that mine is not painted, though at this stage, yours should be painted before you put the fur in place. Go and grab the head and the bottom chin piece. Line it up. And once we feel like we have it in a good position, we'll go ahead and glue it down. And of course, if you find any part feels like it's sticking out just a little bit too much, don't be afraid to trim it down. We'll repeat the process for the upper wing shell. Go and line it up with the top of our shell here. Want to make sure that the fur is running down towards the tail. And again, once we feel like we have lined it up as best we can, we'll go ahead and put some glue down. Make sure as we glue this fur that we aren't gluing down any of these holes in the back because that is going to be a space for the tail feathers later. Of course, any areas that are a little bit too far forward, go ahead and trim those off. Lastly, for our bottom body shell, we'll notice these large cutouts on the side. That is so that way the fur is able to fold a little bit better around the shell. We'll go ahead and again, line it up as best we can. For this, we'll have a lot more areas where we'll have to cut out some of the excess, but we'll go ahead and line it up as best we can for now. Make sure we are not gluing in this area where there is that little dip into the shell. We're gluing just below it. And of course, all of the excess around the edges, we can go ahead and trim down a little bit so that way it fits the shape better. And we have now successfully attached our fur to all of our shells. For the bottom of your bird, you'll also notice these two areas here where the legs will have to pass through. Right now, our fabric doesn't have an opening in it, so go ahead and take your bird scissors, and we are just going to make a very small incision right where the fabric is there, so that way the legs can pass through when assembled. Attaching fur to your large songbird is going to look a little bit differently. We're going to take the piece of fur that we had sewn together. We're going to kind of put it on like a shirt. So I'm going to take the bird's head and with the Velcro, you can see here, facing towards the back of the bird, 
I'm going to bring this up and over the head. Be careful with the beak because the beak can get cut on the fabric. So we'll just poke the beak out and we'll just bring this up and over. The piece of Velcro that's in the central portion of your fur is going to get squeezed right between where the legs are perched. So it kind of pokes out the other side there. We'll go ahead and take our tail piece and we'll attach the Velcro on the back. And with the fabric hooks, we'll go ahead and hook them onto the body shell. And to keep the headpiece attached, we can hot glue a piece of Velcro to the top of the fabric and to the top of the head and pull it over. If you don't want the edges to kind of poke out like that, we can always just tuck them underneath. We can always trim the edges of the fur if we don't like the look. Next, we'll move on to fur and feathers. For your large songbird, we have the top wing shell here. We have two fur pieces that will go on the triangular portion as well as this longer section here. And we'll also put feathers on the shell itself. So we have a finished version on this side. We can see the fur piece on the central area here as well as that longer fur piece. Whenever we glue this down, we want to just put a line down the middle as well as on here to make sure we're able to tuck in the quills underneath the fur and hide them a little bit better. When you're finished, you can just pop it onto your bird like so. For your feathers, we can use some hot glue and we'll hot glue it onto the tail of our bird. We'll want to avoid putting it into any areas that might impede movement. We'll put a few feathers on the top as well as on the bottom of the tail to make sure when it flips up, we don't see any of the mechanical components. When you do put feathers onto the shell of the bird. Make sure you are paying attention to any curve that is in the feather itself and which direction it is traveling. We don't want to have our feathers poking out below our, our wing shell. We want to make sure that they are going in the same direction. For our little bird, if we are working with wings and feathers, it'll look like so. For the wings themselves, you can go ahead and take your paints and you can paint them any color that you'd like. I have an example of that right here. And for the tail feathers, you can see them poking out of the back. We have openings on the bottom, as mentioned previously, where you can take your feathers and put them in place. If the feathers are a little bit too loose or aren't the right, quite right shape, you can always trim them or hot glue them in place. Your bird head also has the same openings for feathers. You can go ahead and use any of those openings for your feathers and hot glue them in place. Now that we've finished with our fur and our feathers, we can go ahead and decorate the base. In your kit, you should have some foam clay we can use this to sculpt the base. As you see on our examples on the table here, there are some trees and vines, as well as some sort of bamboo type of decoration on the perch itself. You can use these to sculpt the perch or any props that you would like. Then you can paint the base. It is recommended that you paint the 
foam clay after 24 hours after you let it dry. If you paint it before that, it might be prone to cracking. Congratulations, you've now successfully figure finished your bird. If you'd like to purchase one of these kits, you can visit our website at garnerholeducation.com or email us at info at garnerholeducation.com.